back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Does Hillary Clinton want to lock you up? The former Secretary of State said in a recent interview that Americans who spread misinformation should face criminal penalties. Let's watch. And boosting Trump back in 2016. But I also think there are Americans who are uh, engaged in uh, this kind of propaganda. Uh, and whether they should be civilly or even in some cases criminally charged uh, is something that would be a better deterrence. Textbook Hillary Clinton doesn't like what people are saying on the internet, still bitter about losing in 2016, thinks the solution is always less speech, more central control, more government control over what people are thinking and saying and doing, and now in the form of, she said it very explicitly there, criminalizing the spreading of misinformation, even though misinformation is obviously and broadly protected by the First Amendment, there is no misinformation exception. I feel like misinformation is the new hate speech, right. where, where everyone who has not, I guess, opened a very simple law textbook, thinks that, oh, well, you know, we have free speech, but hate, I used to hear that all the time. Free speech, but hate speech is something different. No, there's no Supreme Court decision that says hate speech is some different category. In fact, the opposite. There are Supreme Court decisions where they very vigorously affirm that hateful speech is included under the things that are protected, and that has only become uh, more obvious over time. The Supreme Court has become more inclined to be protective of speech um, than it was 100 years ago. So the idea that you could criminalize misinformation, again, just wrong, totally made up, not true, but there she is saying it. What's so insidious about her comments as well is that when the left uses the term like misinformation or hate speech, they're often referring to pretty normal political speech that they don't like, not things that are actually false. And of course, we both would defend people saying false things on the internet anyway, right. because guess what? You're allowed to do that legally and constitutionally. But then you see what they're labeling as misinformation and it makes it even worse because it's things like the vaccine doesn't stop you from getting COVID or spreading right. COVID or the Hunter Biden laptop was right. real. Right. I mean, all of these political narratives that turned out to be true. And it's like, okay, you don't just want to crack down on people saying things that are wrong or false on the internet. You actually want to uh, censor speech that is politically inconvenient to you because it threatens your ability to hold and retain power. Yeah, or it's not even they're not even claiming it's false, but it, it, it is foreign in origin or it helps right. forward some foreign narrative or something like that. It's, it's contrary to what they view is the U.S.'s national security interests. So it should be suppressed and then it gets included as misinformation, disinformation, malinformation. Just again, these transparently made up categories of speech that are perfectly protected. Um, she just, that's just her mindset that she can, but, it, but it's not just her, it's very prevalent now among, um, you say left, I wouldn't even say left necessarily. It's like progressive, sort of intelligence, almost a fo many former neoconservatives, the, the blob, you know, sure. for lack of a better, uh, better term. Um, people who have just become deeply skeptical of speech, um, particularly on social media. A place where you get tons of examples of counter speech. Uh, you know, on, on X, you, a claim gets posted or made that is, if it's wildly false, it often has a note under it or comments or something of people pushing back. Social media actually allows for real-time dissent to take place, especially on X. Um, but it's true of the other platforms as well to some degree. And that's, it's like they can't control that and that's what they really want. That's what they're really missing is control, they being political figures, control over, over that process. Right, I mean, the internet and social media platforms in particular have actually allowed for the democratization of speech, which is a wonderful thing when you live in a country that is contingent on the idea that people get to debate ideas and the best idea wins. Or in the case of voting, the candidates get to talk and they get to debate each other and then the American people get to vote for the best candidate. It should be the same way with speech, um, but these people resent that idea, they don't want individuals to be able to actually have a battle of the ideas because they're worried that their ideas might lose. And, you know, somewhat ironically, this is part of the reason why Trump continues to garner support among a lot of Americans, because he doesn't tell them that mm -hmm. the things that they're saying are wrong, hateful, dangerous, need to be criminalized. I mean, Hillary Clinton in 2015 and 2016 spent 
a not insignificant part of her time demonizing Bernie supporters by claiming that the Bernie bros were all Russian bots that were out to get her. And then she did the same thing with Trump supporters, calling them deplorables and accusing them of fomenting Russian disinformation against her as well. And people obviously have an aversion to that idea that they are being used as tools of a foreign country, which is especially hilarious because back when the Washington Post and the New York Times started running these articles accusing the libs of TikTok account of misinformation, one of the individuals who helped to unmask the person behind that account was someone who was being paid by a German disinformation research organization. Mm -hmm. So that was actually direct foreign influence, um, but that was left out of the conversation as they were demonizing people who were simply reposting videos, by yeah. the way, of what people on the left were saying on the internet. The fact-checking organization that Reason has run into trouble with in the past, that the flagged Reason content is dangerous or something, is the Global Disinformation Index. Well, they're a British nonprofit, so right. it's like, and, and I don't care, this whole f kind of foreign influence stuff is a very lazy smear and it, it lazy and sometimes xenophobic to me. Like, I'll listen to what British people or Russian people or Chinese people or Iranian people or African people have to say. It's like, w is the content of what they're saying, um, is it true or is it valid is much more important than, well, what are the motivations of the people saying it and what are their national security interests? Obviously, we should keep those things in mind, but you can, like, that doesn't, now it's just, well, consider the source. And so it must be delegitimized based on the source. And that's a very, um, I think, limiting way to think about things. I also think Hillary Clinton type people have actually just given up on the idea that um, persuasion works. or that they, they think that if good ideas, want, if you have free speech and you have civil debate and discourse and good ideas win out over time, I think they think that then Kamala Harris will be winning the election yes. like by 90% of the vote or something. Like the fact that it's so close and that many Americans are genuinely undecided, maybe think a lot of things they don't like about Trump, but really don't like the policies of the Biden-Harris administration and they're conflicted, Hillary Clinton type people think that's, that's baffling to them, that this could be a, a, a close election where a, people you have a range of sincere love of Trump, sincere love of Kamala, and everything in between. They think that would be impossible if if free speech actually worked. And so they're gradually giving up on the concept is what I suspect. That, that is exactly what it is. Hillary Clinton cannot grasp the idea as someone, but she was rejected. Right. She's yeah. she's arrogant enough to believe that her party has a monopoly on truth and that if their ideas go out to the American public they will win because they're the right or the good ideas. And the fact that she didn't win, as you said to her, is an indictment that the American right. people don't have the capability of reasoning with the information that they're given and coming to the quote unquote right conclusion. And the right conclusion is that Hillary and the Democrats should right. always win. Well, actually, it's just she was a bad candidate. <laughs> she just didn't do a good job campaigning. Maybe visit Michigan and Pennsylvania a little bit more next time, um, something that Biden and Kamala actually understand better than her, at least, in that they're visiting the swing states. Imagine that. I know. They're actually in Wisconsin. Imagine that. How about that? Free media. We'll be back with more right after this.